Well, hello, welcome back to Tale Three Cabins, gift giving. Let's get right into it. And also stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving one of these gifts away and I'll tell you how you can win that. All right, so if you become a tractor owner and you've never really worked on tractors or don't know much about them, you are going to learn a lot about tractors. You're going to find if you want to save money and you start looking at the cost of having someone else maintain your tractor that you're going to end up wanting to do it yourself. So one of the nice things to have would be a little creeper and I spent maybe just under $30 for this. I was always a holdout when it came to things like this. I used to always just be on the ground doing the boot scoot pookie and uh, getting getting wet, getting dirty, but I finally broke down. Makes it a lot easier when you maintain your tractor. You're going to be changing the oil, you're going to be changing the hydraulic fluid, and you're going to be greasing, and those are all things that you got to do underneath. Plus, there might be minor things that you need to tighten or adjust from now and then, and this becomes a big help after a while. A buck 25, pull noodle. All right, there are times that I don't want to put the forks on, but I need to move something that I don't really want to damage, and the sharp edges of the bucket could gouge, for example, my kayaks. So I have these pull noodles and I have them on the edges to protect it. And it's easy for me to put stuff that is delicate and act kind of as a set of forks, even though I don't want to take the time to put on the set of forks and just move something really quick. Along the same lines of maintaining your tractor, get yourself a good size oil pan. I would look into getting one that can hold about four gallons of oil or hydraulic fluid. One with a spout so you can re-pour this back into your new containers once you got the old stuff out. This one is small but simple, a telescoping magnet. I don't know how many times that I've been playing around with some little bolts or screws, especially when I was putting a cab on the tractor and this might have fell in a tight spot underneath the engine compartment or even down just below the seat. And this is just a lifesaver to grab those hard two bolts that fall in between the nooks and crannies. Another thing I was a big holdout on was a steering wheel knob. I got one for Christmas last year. I installed it. It took a little bit of getting used to, a little bit of a learning curve. We were doing a lot of plowing of snow in January and February, and this really made a big difference once you got the hang of it. So if your tractor owner does not own one of these, it's a good investment get used to it and most people say they can't live without it once they have it on there. All right so I have a natural gas house, I have a gas dryer, hot water tank and furnace, then we have propane tanks for our RV, I have a propane tank in here if I need to run a heater to take the chill off the air. So I'm around combustible gases quite a bit and then also combustible fluids with diesel fuel, gasoline, etc. When I was on the fire department, we had a combustible gas detector and it was only at one station out of the five because they were so expensive. So if we had to go out on a call, we used to have to call headquarters where this detector was at, have them bring it down. And now prices have changed, things are a little bit better. When I left, we had them at all the stations, but they were still pretty pricey and they needed to be calibrated all the time. Um, sometimes it was more of a hindrance than a help. But nowadays, you can get a device like this, and it's a top TES, top test, and it is a gas detector, and I'm pretty impressed with it. I got this to check for gas leaks. I had a little minor gas leak over by my grill area. Every now and then I'd get a whiff of natural gas, and I was able to pinpoint it and repair it. I would like to show you how that would have been, but I had already repaired it before I got this product. And I just want to say that if you have a strong odor of natural gas, you're going to want to call 911 and not worry about detecting where the leak is coming from. But every now and then, if you get a little wisp of natural gas, maybe in your basement or near where you have a propane tank stored, and you're trying to determine where the leak is, this can help you out. It has an on-off button, and it'll take about... 40 seconds for it to warm up and calibrate. Try to keep it in a clean air atmosphere before you introduce it to where the gas is gonna be. You'll hear a little tone, it's gonna beep once it's ready to go. And then you have a high sensitivity and a low sensitivity. The low sensitivity will detect combustible gases up to 500 parts per million. And then if you put it on high sensitivity, it's gonna do it at 50 parts per million. And I was trying to figure out a way that I could show you just how minute of gas that you need without 
ruining one of my pipes or loosening up a joint and opening up a can of worms for myself. And I figured out if I just took a simple little cigarette lighter and I'm only going to depress it for a fraction of a second, maybe a third of a second, and just not even light it, just kind of let out a little bit of the gas and have this sensor nearby and show you how quickly this reacts. So if you think that's a fluke, let's try it one more time. So that's a pretty minute amount of gas, probably as small as a pilot light or smaller coming out of that lighter and it detected it with no problem. As you get closer to a leak, there's going to be a little bar graph that gets higher and higher and then once you max it out it's going to turn red and give you an alarm tone. So it's pretty cool. It's only a little over $20. It's amazing. Like I said when I was on the fire department these things were several hundred dollars. Always needed to be serviced and calibrated and now you can get something like this. It comes with a little carrying case so you can keep it safe, keep the sensor clear and clean. But it's pretty cool, it would make a nice little stocking stuffer, not that expensive, and I think it could be a big help. And I think we've all had that case when we have a natural gas appliances or pipes in our house. Every now and then we get a little wisp of it, and we're not sure where it's coming from. This can help you pinpoint it without spraying soapy water everywhere. All right, next up, diesel fuel cans. I started out with this type here. It has this little lip that you hang it on the edge of the, the filler port of the tractor. And then uh, it also helps keep some of the weight off and it opens up a little valve once this is depressed. Otherwise, if you tip it over, no fuel comes out. But I've since upgraded to this type and I like this a little bit better. And I'll leave some links in the description down below on all this stuff. But this one has a little switch. So once you get it into your filler, you depress this and then your fuel starts running in. I really like the no spill cans compared to just the old fashioned ones where odds are you're gonna spill something. So this is probably my favorite right now. And this one isn't bad, but when I put the cab on, things got a little tight back there. I could squeeze things in, but I can never tip this far back enough to get all the diesel out. Where this, I can tilt it a little bit more. Just the way it works with the cab right now. So if you have a tractor, you're gonna be using a lot of these depending on the attachments you have, or you might have a hitch, or like in our case, we have the RV. So a lot of pins are involved, and sometimes these are not too bad to get on and off, depending, but sometimes they're a bear, especially if you're not in the right position, maybe you're leaning over something, you're kinda on the wrong side of it. And I have a couple of these for different purposes, mostly with the RV, and also for changing the hitch ball when I have the loader hitch on. So it's really easy to pull on and off, and if you're in a precarious position, if you're leaning over something, you don't have to be directly in front of it and pulling it. You don't have to get a finger in there and, and do that. You don't have to try to pry this little in first to help it out. It's just a nice grab and it pulls right off. Makes things a little bit easier. And I don't have to put them on everything. There's things that I use on a daily basis where I have these on there and it makes a big difference. does help, especially in the colder weather. Back to maintenance. If you're going to be doing your own maintenance on here, you're going to want to add a three-quarter inch socket set. And Harbor Freight sells these for right around $79, $75, maybe cheaper when you have the coupon. I use these all the time, especially when I have to work with my hitches and I need to change the ball on the hitch. So it comes in handy with the tractor and I've also found other uses for this three-quarter inch drive set. And it's not that expensive. I wouldn't say it's high quality, but I think the quality is good enough for uses with the tractor and odds and ends like I'm going to be using it. One thing that I keep in my little toolbox here is a stiff rubber mallet. And this comes in handy if uh, I've screwed something on a little bit too tight and I need to whack it a little bit loose. This has interchangeable, if you wear it out, you can replace these ends. Another thing that's a lifesaver to me from time to time is one of these little portable air tanks. There's times where I get a little flat tire on maybe a, a small trailer I have or a wheelbarrow or something that's pretty far away from the house and the tire is so low that the rim isn't sealed up 
and you need a good blast of air, something that a small little air compressor just isn't going to handle. You can fill this up to a good 120 PSI. I believe the max is 125. And you don't even have to have a compressor to fill this up, like a large compressor. You can use one of the smaller compressors that you'd use for filling up your car tire or bike tire. It just takes longer to fill it up. But once you have it filled up, it'll give you a good rush of air to refill some of those tires. I find this a little bit easier to lug around than a pancake compressor, especially when I have to walk further into the woods or out in the field. All right, you've seen me review power stations in the past, or some of you may have seen me do it. But I also carry around, for example, this small one here, and I use it to power my heated vest. Right now it's about 32 degrees in my pole barn, so it's not too bad with this heated vest on. But this little power station is a Power Ad Pro. And what I like about it is that on the display here, it tells you the percentage of what you have in battery life. Or when you're charging, it'll tell you percentage that it's going back up. So you have a good idea what's going on with this thing, where a lot of these little portable chargers for your phone, they may give you a couple bars or it might not even have anything, just a light that comes on. So you really don't have a good grasp of how much power is on here. So it's got two USB ports, it's got a USB mini port, and then it's got a USB-C port. So I can charge my phone probably two times off of this when we're on our friend's boat with the boat trip and when we're underway and we're go cruising for four or five hours, there's a lot of times where the outlets aren't working in the boat because the generator's not on. I was using different cameras and other devices and this was great to keep things charged up fully. So it's the Power Ad Pro, 10,000 milliamp hours capacity. It can dole out 20 watts so it's powerful enough to run my tablet i can run my ipad with it or charge my ipad with it and like i said i can charge my phone a couple times but this works great i can charge these little cameras even like this little microphone and i don't need the big power station the one thing i like about this one is this vest just has a slim little pocket and it slides right in there piece of cake and when i have this hooked up when I turn my vest on, it gives me some supplemental heat, and it'll last a good five to six hours. Five to six hours on high, maybe six or seven on the lower settings. One other thing I really like about it is it comes with a little charger like most of these things do, and a little cable, but on the charger, it actually has the name of it on the side, so you don't have all these little power bricks and chargers and AC adapters, and you're not sure which one goes to where, and how many volts is this one, and how many amps is that one. At least it has a name on there so it's, I can keep them paired together and I don't get it mixed up with anything else. All right, this is still one of my favorites. You've probably seen it last year, but it's a headlamp that's got motion sensor in there. So if I'm working underneath the tractor, it's got a nice wide LED area so I don't have to point directly where I'm looking at all the time. It covers everything real nice. And it does have a little spotlight if you want to hone in on something. Pretty cool, rechargeable, not too expensive. And another great thing to do maintenance on your tractor with. My garbage can carrier. That goes right into the hitch. Again, when I have those pins. So I have this, I got it from Titan, and it's used to carry my large garbage cans. The recyclable can and the regular garbage comes in handy. If I don't feel like walking them down, we do have a very long driveway, or when I go to pick them up, to just put this on the loader, go out there, scoop underneath the can, bring it back, drop it off, scoop underneath the next can. So I use these many times, especially in the winter time when it's a little precarious walking up and down the driveway if it's icy out. I can take the tractor out, go get my garbage cans, bring them back, or take them out. All right, so that's going to be it, and I'm going to give one of these products away. So I didn't say anything about a contest in the description because I think if I say giveaway or contest that the little spam bots hone in on something like that and ruin it with uh, trying to infiltrate in the comments and try to mask me or impersonate me so if you're watching this you can leave a comment below and i will pick that person a week from this video coming out and i believe this is going to be coming out tuesday november 29th if i'm wrong i'll put the date down below and what i'll do is i'll pick a person's name by then and in my next video coming out the following tuesday i will name who that winner is and i will try to get a hold of them if for some reason the little spam bots start infiltrating the comment section i'm not going to contact anybody until after tuesday december 5th so if you leave a comment, somebody's going to win one of these top TES or top test combustible gas leak detectors. 
So good luck everybody. I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Have a great holiday season and uh, keep an eye on us. Take care everybody.